Good afternoon. Welcome back. The moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> All right, Yoshiki san is here. We will start with. Uh, We will start with a video introducing Yoshiki san. So please. You guys have sold over 30 million records. Yoshiki is a musical idol. Different level of rock star. If those guys were born in America, they might be the biggest band in the world. A Japanese music icon who's collaborated with musicians like Queen is turning to his fans to help the people of Ukraine. He's living in Los Angeles at the moment and has already raised millions of dollars. Eyewitness News reporter Eric Resendiz has the story. Yoshiki Hayashi is a music star in Japan and he is one of the most influential composers in Japanese history selling over 50 million albums worldwide and leader of the iconic band X-Japan. Tonight, when it comes to pop culture, we rely on Dan Harris to keep an eye out for the hottest new sensations. And he found a band that in Japan is bigger than the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Bruce Springsteen combined. Yoshiki is a huge star in Japan. So big, he has his own branded Visa card, and he's the first person ever to have a Hello Kitty doll named Please after welcome him. Welcome our very special guest today, Yoshiki. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association chose a Japanese rock and roll legend with Bruce Springsteen. Japan's Japan's Yoshiki-san Golden Globe Award winner. Tonight's Golden Globe theme is composed by international music artist Yoshiki. This is Sean Parr.
it's, um, it's hard to put into words how excited we are to have you here, Yoshiki-san. You can see it in tears of some of the audience members' eyes. Um, and I've never, been, uh, I've never imagined that I would say these words uh, here. This is something I've been dreaming of. Welcome to Stanford, Yoshiki-san. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, the person who made this all possible is Ambassador Ichiro Fujisaki, who is a rock star in his own right in the world of <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> so Ambassador, Ambassador Fujisaki has occupied a number of important positions at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan uh, before serving as a Japanese ambassador to the United States from 2008 to 2012. And I uh, understand that that's when uh, Fujisaki, Ambassador Fujisaki and Yoshiki-san met. Um, he has since taken many important positions at leading universities such as Sofia and major corporations such as Itochu, and he is currently the president of the America Japan Society and president and CEO of the Nakasone Peace Institute. Uh, so with much, much gratitude, uh, please join me in welcoming Ambassador Fujisaki to moderate this session. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tsutsui, uh, for a uh, very nice introduction. Uh, some 50 years ago, I was strolling on the campus of Stanford. A few predicted that I will come back here as ambassador of Japan. Very few, but there were some. But no one predicted that I will come back as a moderator for World Rockstar. <laughs> so, but today, I know that this is not my show and Yoshiki's show. Uh, also, uh, also, when I retired from diplomatic job 10 years ago, ambassador of Japan to US, I said, now I can say anything. <laughs> My wife said, but dear, no one cares anymore. <laughs> so I know that I should stay croco today and wearing like this, but I think to speak, maybe it's better to have the mask off. Yoshiki needs no introduction. There's a saying that a person needs no introduction, but he really is the one. He's the worldly musician and entrepreneur uh, now, uh, what uh, comes up to my mind is that uh, this is his first appearance to, as a keynote speaker to major university. So Stanford did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Someone was already weeping. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, today, you know what day is today is. It's Emperor's birthday in Japan. Mm. And Emperor's birthday, uh, let's talk mm. about Emperor. I know that Yoshiki has special relations with the imperial family because I run America Japan site in Japan, and in 2017, we made a video in that I asked Yoshiki to put a message to that. And I brought it to then Emperor and Empress, now Emperor Emeritus and Empress Emeritus. And they saw it and said, oh, Yoshiki-san, <laughs> very gladly. So I thought, wow, really, uh, they, uh, love this uh, uh, rock star. And uh, as we have seen in video, he has composed, he was asked to compose a song, uh, music for uh, their 10th anniversary of enthronement. And he played it in front of uh, Emperor and Empress. And also it was televised nationwide. Everyone watched it. So can you tell us a bit about your relations with that uh, uh, imperial family and uh, the anniversary song, please? Okay. 
So first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. It's such an honor for me to be speaking in front of amazing people. And then Ambassador Fujisaki-san, thank you so much for being my friend almost a decade. Um, we met in Washington, Washington, D.C. 2012? Yeah, and uh, we met in L.A. as well. Los Angeles, yeah, too. That, yeah. That's right, that's right. Yes. So, yeah, I'm so grateful uh, to be here. Okay, the question. Uh, when I composed the piano concerto for Emperor of Japan, 10th year's anniversary uh, of his reign, <laughs> Well, to be honest, I was shocked because <laughs> I've been, you know, I was since just rock star, <laughs> not like, a, you know, it's kind of was very strange in a positive way. So, but my background, actually, I started playing classical music. I'm studying classical music when I, when I was four years old. They started playing rock drums when I was 10. The reason I started playing rock drums, um, I was just practicing and you know, playing classical music, listening to classical music only. But my father passed away when I was 10. So then my mother bought me a drum set because I was going through some painful moment, anger and everything. Uh, my father actually took his own life. So then I started you know, practicing rock and playing rock and everything. Then. I became rock star. But I was still plucked, you know, playing classical music, composing cl pl classical music. So then the moment, the, the year, I was asked to compose, you know, for the, um, for the emperor's piano concerto. Um, my band, some people may know, um, it's called Ex Japan. So it's a rock band. Um, disbanded that year. We got reunited in a year late, years later. But also one of my uh, best friends slash the member of Ex Japan passed away. So I was going through like a you know, painful time again. Then because of the, so many painful moments with the bands and everything, just I was gonna quit being an um, artist. I was not as concentrated on becoming a producer or something like this. Then I was asked to compose, not only compose, also perform. It's like, wow, our life is very <laughs> strange. So there's some, you know, I asked my mother, um, what should I do? You know, should I go back um, to the stage to perform? I'm, I feel very honored to do, you know, to be asked. Then, so I did it. So that was kind of like a life-changing moment again not only playing in the front of an you know, amazing um, emperor and empress. At the same time, that day, I decided to go back on the stage again. Let's see. Thank you very much. So uh, the em uh, em emperor then and empress then uh, sort of gave you the encouragement to go back as to a musician. And as you said, you started music very early. And I read that uh, when you were in grade school, teachers said, ask the students what you want to be when you're grown up. And he wrote, rock star. <laughs> and the teacher was very mad and scolded him, saying, you write something serious in this essay. And he said, I'm serious. So she scolded him more. So, but she was uh, scolded him, but he was downright. After several years, at the age of uh, 15, he gave uh, the first concert, and 17, he, you became pro. So you were very successful uh, uh, musician already, but you decided to move out to LA. Uh, why was that? Uh, if you stayed in Japan, you don't think the door would open to the world? And if I may ask, why LA? Not uh, New York or uh, uh, London, nor San Francisco or Palo Alto. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, first of all, the, yeah, when I was, you know, um, junior high or elementary school, junior high, high school, yeah, like uh, teachers, actually teachers asked me, you know, I have, we have to like just write down your, where you're going to be, your occupation or something like this. <laughs> yeah, I said rock stars, a rock star from the get-go. Yeah, they are so mad. <laughs> like, can you be something, you know, can you write something more realistic? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm coming from some kind of countryside. They are, you know, uh, called Chiba Prefecture. Um, then my place, the, the way I play, uh, coming from is Tateyama. So it's like um, countryside, so no musicians or no rock star. <laughs> so yeah, it's very, uh, people, uh, teachers, so very, very unrealistic that could happen. Even, even in Japan uh, around that time, so I would say 30, 40 years ago, rock star was not even occupation. It's something, you know, didn't exist at that time. <laughs> so I just kept saying that. Um, I just knew something, I could do something. I don't know, it's just, um, just believed in. Anyway, so then you know, several years later, uh, I think we, I, we, a band made it to, I would say, you know, one of the biggest bands in Japan. But at the same time, um, there are much bigger mountain to climb, I thought. You know, so then coming to Los Angeles, I mean, Los Angeles kind of like a center, Hollywood, the center of the entertainment industry, right? So I would say New York is more fashion driven. Um, so, so I wanted to, you know, how do you say, pursue our dreams, like American dream. Uh, so decided to come to Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, how did you like the uh, life there? Uh, uh, it must be not easy to start when you, you didn't speak language and also uh, the food and everything. Uh, and now, I think, after so many years, uh, you're so used to uh, American life. What, what do you like about America? Uh, for example, what kind of uh, music, movie, uh, food, uh, anything you, or other things you like about America? Um, you know, I love Japanese food, so, but in Los Angeles, you can get pretty decent Japanese food, so <laughs> that's not the problem. Um, the one thing I was shocked, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm trying to be humble, yeah. so um, I can walk, down, walk on the street without people recognize me and faint. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, they also, you know, I realized, you know, there are so many people around the world, you know, coming to Hollywood to pursue their dreams. So, so, so I was like, wow, I can learn a lot of culture, in, of course, in American culture to, you know, so Los Angeles is a kind of very melting pot, you know. Yeah, when I came to Los Angeles, um, almost that was the late 20, when I was, you know, most close to 30, I spoke zero English. <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> I need to speak English here. So, <laughs> so I studied in the past, you know, intensively in two years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said uh, Chiba is a countryside. And not to degrade uh, Chiba in any sense, but uh, in order to sell land there, they invented a word Chibafornia, following California. <laughs> really? They tried to send. Was that so? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Wow. But, but, uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you advise now young Japanese artists to come to the United States to really go into the world stage like you did? I mean, of course. No, if, if you come, that doesn't 
of, uh, promise any success, but uh, rather than staying in Japan, is that, do you think, better to do that? Good question. Um, when I came here, it was not that much, like how do you say, social media or internet was not that popular. So these days, you can be your own city or your place, anywhere in the world, can you know, achieve your dream, I think. But to come here, to you know, come to I mean, America, then you feel, how do you say, I don't know how to say, it's like a feel the vibe of the air and everything. It's something you can do this just through, you know, social media or something like that. So I would recommend to, you know, um, to, it doesn't have to be US or uh, Europe or, uh, you know, so to, to, if it's a center of fashion or something like this, go to Paris or uh, Milan or London, or if you are pursuing the, um, entertainment industry. So I would say Hollywood, yes, mm -hmm. I would recommend that. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Now, my third question is that uh, you're successful in so many things. Uh, in music, you are composing music, you're a classically trained pianist, you are a rock uh, drummer, and you're a leader of X Japan, and now you won the last rock star. And also, uh, not only in music field, you do other things, uh, like you produce wine, you produce champagne, you produce energy drinks, and uh, you pre design Baccarat glasses to drink them as well. Uh, and also, you design uh, you're a fashion designer, uh, model yourself, you design kimono, because your uh, family was a uh, kimono uh, store, and also you uh, design s things like sensu. I have uh, Yoshiki oh, sensu. Really? And, uh, <laughs> this is uh, my birthday gift from my daughter. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, and besides that, uh, you uh, produce a t television as well. And you, it shows that uh, I don't have dementia. I have a pretty good memory, don't I? Uh, so you do many things so successfully. And uh, you challenge new things. I think you like challenges. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, do you decide just by yourself or uh, do you go around getting advices of others? Do you have good advices? Uh, I was wondering, how, how is it? And also, if, if you think you made some mistake, do you get up middle of the night thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done that? Do, does <clears throat> these things happen as well to you? Completely. I think I made so many mistakes. I failed so many times. Mm -hmm. It's like a, when do you, has, how do you say, draw the line, you failed. I just didn't draw the line. I say I failed. It's like, if you decide that within 10 years I will accomplish this, within 10 years or five years, if you didn't get to, if you didn't get to the goal, so probably you'd say that. But I kind of like, uh, how do you say, time frame, I think like throughout my life. So once something didn't go the way you want, uh, or like what, you know, the society might say you find kind of failed, but in my own mind was just a stepping stone to go to the next step. So I just didn't give up. Um, then I still don't give up. Um, it's kind of, you know, um, painful story, but yeah, when I lost my father, I was like, why did my father give up? He gave up on his life. Mm. 
I was like, then I was, you know, I loved him so much. Um, I was like, when she then started thinking, well, I was already 10 years old, or already, uh, or only 10 years old, I was like, hmm, what's giving up me, you know? So then at that moment, I said, hmm, I won't give up till the moment I need to give up. So if you take that kind of <laughs> theory to whatever in your life, you can't give up. Not only for, for myself, for my friends or for people who I love, something like that. So I can't give up. So that, <laughs> then I started doing all those things. Just, you know, those designing kimono or fashion or uh, producing wine. This happened somehow organically. Um, you know, I'm not really pursuing the business side. I just, I love drinking wine. <laughs> So might as well create all your own wine. So or I love you know fashion, something like this. So those things happen organically. But once I started doing this, I was like, okay, I'll try to make it happen. You know, then of course that's a lot of things didn't go like you know well. But at the same time, I was like, okay, I learned this. So now go to the step two, step three. So and I'm still doing it. I think you have a great taste for uh, wine or design, other things, so that you know that this would be loved by others as well. And you try them. You like challenges. And uh, as you say, you don't give up so easily and pursue. Now, if there are people who would like to do startups here uh, or do some business, do you have some advices following your line? When, how to pursue your objective? Uh, when to sort of decide to change course or modify or whatever? Of course, uh, uh, it needs courage and it needs preparation and, of course, funding as well. But uh, if you can give some advices, I think they'll like to hear because you have been so successful in so many areas. Uh, I'd like to hear it. Maybe it's a little too late, but I'll first uh, try to listen to that. Well, um, it's like, how should I say? It's like believe in yourself. Like um, <clears throat> when I was, you know, uh, when I lost who I love, or when I was going through, when I was going through some pain, I was just, existing, not living. That was just like telling myself, regardless, you are still breathing in this world. Might as well live like a rock star. So I would say, be your own rock star. That, you know, whatever you do, just believe in yourself. That I can say. Thank you. Uh, this uh, <clears throat> symposium is on future of social tech, nurturing skills and markets for social impact innovation. On uh, artificial intelligence, AI, uh, some people say that there's, there'll be a day of singularity <clears throat> where AI can do everything uh, better than human, but uh, you have been a musician and entrepreneur. And uh, from uh, those angles, uh, how do you look at AI? <laughs> okay, uh, before I came here, I was asking chat GPT. <laughs> 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 if Yoshiki, give a speech at Stanford. <laughs> what would he say? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I, you know, uh, Chad GPT gave me a lot of like advice. <clears throat> so then, you know, I was thinking, what would AI change in terms of the you know, art world? You know, like uh, such as like you know, if you are 
painter, it's a Dali, is changing a lot of like, you know, this winning award. Uh, music industry, there's a Google uh, Music LM, uh, some kind of uh, AI generative, um, you know, uh, thing you can use to compose music as well. Um, yes, um, the answer, I do not know um, for the future. But also, you know, people talk about singularity. Mm -hmm. That could happen. That may not happen. That was to think, start thinking. Like uh, all those big data, right? AI, AI start learning coming from us. It's like, um, OK, so if the human, humanity is it meant to destroy ourselves, AI will do it faster. If humanity is meant to support and love each other, I think AI will support us. So <clears throat> we should just, you know, let's live, you know, to like uh, support each other and, and love one another. So then when singularity moment comes, AI will support us. That's how I think. Because they are, AI is start learning from the big data that's coming from us. So, you know, <laughs> that's, yeah, they, or AI will become so smart to stop us destroying ourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> now, Yoshiki is, is very much into philanthropy. And uh, the first, uh, really, uh, I think that was the first time or second time we met in Washington, D.C., was uh, on those occasions. <clears throat> uh, a group, Hands on Tokyo, was uh, having a uh, event in the embassy of Japan. And uh, Yoshiki was good enough to come here, and everyone was excited. But uh, every time when big disaster happens, or natural disaster, whatever, he's there, uh, really in person or uh, sending a huge contribution. And it's really, that's uh, noticeable. And uh, can you tell us why uh, you so much into philanthropy? Um, I think helping someone also helps you. It's like, um, yeah, like um, it's kind of like a selfish way, but I would like to help people. <laughs> That's that me doing this, actually helping myself. Sometimes I was like, like, why do I exist in this world? I got, but as long as I live, I'm helping someone. That. Fact is actually helping myself, not, you know, it's like, um, I have to admit, again, from, the, from the, the moment my father left this world, I kind of have like a, you know, like a, like a death wish, is, is not that strong, but you know, why do I exist? I'm always asking myself. I was like, but again, when I'm supporting people, like, wow, I can still be in this world, then, you know. So that's why actually <laughs> um, I'm doing a lot a charity also that's also saving my life at the same time. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, but it's very impressive and please do continue. And that now my uh, question is that uh, you have attained so much uh, and but still, you are trying new things. For example, you started champagne recently and credit card, as we have seen. And uh, uh, 
you have started the new group of uh, the last rock stars as well. You never stop. And uh, don't you think of uh, slowing down sometime? You have some, if I may say, health problems from time to time. Don't, uh, don't you feel that you should uh, sort of uh, restrain yourself? But uh, how do you think about sort of going? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just very grateful, you know, uh, people ask, ask me or we can collaborate or we can, you know, pretty much every day I'm asked to do something. Um, I just feel very grateful, you know, people like I need me to do something. So, yeah, it's like, mm, yeah. So uh, you think uh, you will be going like this uh, from now on as well. <laughs> and that's very good. Uh, it's encouraging to hear. Uh, but I'd like to do more charity. Like, um, it's, um, yeah. I want, once watched uh, television, and on television show, you were talking with a junior high school girl she asked, a Japanese girl asked you, what should I do be, be doing? And uh, your answer was very sort of standard answer. Concentrate on your studies now. And I, I oh, I thought, wow, that's a very... <laughs> and you also said, uh, uh, you now speak English, but uh, because you didn't do that uh, when you were young, you had a, a rather hard time uh, studying English, and you still con continue to study English. So to the young girls, do study. And uh, um, also, also you call yourself amateur of uh, music, although you're a classically trained pianist. Now, uh, here at Stanford, the most famous commencement speech was from Steve Jobs. And as everyone know, the last word was, stay hungry, stay foolish. I'd like to ask, uh, I should have asked to chat G uh, GPT, <laughs> GPT before, but uh, I would ask him, what would Yoshiki say to Stanford students? Uh, what's your message like uh, what Jobs said? Uh, for for their life, for their life, they are uh, in rea really maybe not too hungry, not so foolish students, but uh, still they would like to hear from you the advice. <laughs> oh, see, they are what having the. <laughs> so I already said it actually. So also you know having several conversation with ChatGPT. <laughs> I decide, yeah, so I would say, again, also telling myself to the same thing, that the word, be your own rock star. That, uh, be your own rock star. Be your own rock star. How? <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, you know, believe in yourself. Yeah, so, ah, yeah, hero is, you know, within you. It's... Like when I was thinking, like um, when I was, you know, okay, whatever, competing for anything, or just trying to create the um, amazing music, or practicing piano, or practicing drums, then or I was just going through some hard time. I was like, who am I fighting? And I think just you're fighting towards fighting with your weak side of yourself. Like you have to beat that person within you, right? So I just think if you believe in yourself, so you can <clears throat> conquer anything. And it doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. It's not only for young people, middle age, and old people, too. I don't think so. I don't think so. so. Um, I have a good friend. He, uh, he's, um, his name is uh, Yamanaka. Uh, he won the Nobel Prize, uh, IPS. Shinichi Yamanaka. Yeah, he's a very good friend of mine. <laughs> I asked him, how long are we going to live? <laughs> Oops. 
I, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hope the camera was not on. <laughs> So he said at uh, that moment, like 120 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you think about that, uh, you are still, you I know, see, I yeah. See. Um, we're still very young. Um, well, it depends on how you want to live your life, 120 years. I see. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's, I would say, you know, never too late to. Yeah. Uh, start anything. Also, you know, as I said, um, I wish I studied English when I was like, you know, much younger, so I didn't have to go through and you know every day recording twelve hours and six hours of English lesson every day for a few years. You know, when I came here, so that's why I said, you know, I was on TV. Some, you know, um, a lady asked me, you know, what should I do? Study right now while you can. <laughs> Okay, now I think you come here to ask questions. A lot of people have questions to Yoshiki, so don't hesitate to ask. And I have foundation video too. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a charity foundation video too. Okay, yes. Before mind. we uh, go, uh, we'll see one more video, okay?
now we will take uh, questions. Uh, please uh, uh, say it in English uh, very, but uh, because of the time constraint, let's make it brief. And uh, uh, please say your name and uh, questions. Uh, raise your hand and if I point, uh, 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 someone will bring microphone to you. So please stand up and uh, say your name and uh, answer your question. Uh, uh, I think I would like to give uh, opportunities more to students uh, uh, here. Uh, you raise your hand, this uh, gentleman here? Yeah, okay. Yes, hi, uh, my name is Shin. Thank you for uh, setting this um, event. Uh, my question is, um, can you share us your um, daily routine to keep yourself motivated or um, before like a, to give a, a great performance? How do I motivate myself, daily, daily routine? <laughs> um, okay, I'm like a very, like a night owl. <laughs> okay. Um, mm. Um, it's like, um, I almost think like, I don't hope it's a positive way. Like, uh, today's my last day, right? It's like every day. So what if there's no tomorrow? What would I do? Because, uh, some people just like, uh, think about future or think about the past, but what about, what, what, how about this present moment? So I was like, okay, there might be no tomorrow. So let's live as much as, as much as I can. That's kind of how I might motivate myself because my experience, you know, I lost no only father or my band members. So, so that's, I don't know if I answer, you know, it makes sense what I'm talking about, but yes, try to, okay. try to leave that this question. moment as much as I can. Okay, the gentleman there. Hi, my name is Hiro Otaki, the school, from School of Medicine. Thank you very much for coming to Stanford. And then I have two questions. One, how do you get inspiration for the new things like a new instru you know, new piece or new your activity or like a philanthropic things. How do you get the inspiration of new things? That's one question. The second is maybe all of you agree, you are so charming. How, what makes you so attractive? <laughs> well, uh, am I what? Attractive. attractive? <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. I think <laughs> he got it, but... Uh, uh, this was the exception, but uh, let's keep your question one person to one because there are so many people here. Uh, but uh, he uh, asked you two questions about uh, uh, where do you get your inspiration. Second was uh, how do you make yourself so attractive? So, <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for saying that. <laughs> okay, so um, I think again, you know, over. Uh, decades of creating music. Why do I create music? Again, try to save people's lives. Or t I try to do something for pe you know people. I, I, my music can stimulate something people to become positive or uh, helping people or something like that, including myself. I started writing, composing music after my father's death. I tried to keep myself alive. Try to keep myself motivated like to, to create music. I think I do philanthropic work and you know, and creating music, kind of same thing. Try to motivate myself. So again, I said so many times this uh, session, why do I live? Maybe because of, as long as I'm live, I'm doing something, I'm helping someone. So through music or through charity, you know, philanthropic work or, so that's how I motivate myself. Um, it's like, yeah, um, it's strange. It's like, um, you know, people <laughs> talk about GDP, right? Gross domestic products. Is that the 
those are the words should measure the world. Number one GDP, US, China, Japan, blah, blah, blah. Should we concentrate on more like a national happiness? Like a, this is gross, national happiness, GNH or something like that? You can come, come up with it. How happy you are, this country can be. Because again, I you know went through rockstar life. I had 10 Ferraris, something like this, or you know, Rolls Royce, or a crazy house. That fact made myself happy? Not really. When I helped people, if people say thank you or arigato, like, wow, that really makes myself happy, then that's, um, you know, I'm still learning what exactly the purpose of this life, but I think one thing is for sure is helping people to really motivate myself. And uh, to make yourself attractive. <laughs> 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 well, I eat well. <laughs> I don't sleep well, but um, yeah, I work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw the video that you were working out so vigorously. Yes, I don't have an answer for this, but thank you for saying this. Okay, okay, okay. You, you raise your hand. Yeah. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you for coming to Stanford. Actually, uh, I'm Anna Matsumoto, undergrad and sophomore at Stanford University. I have one question. Uh, whenever you come across with some, like you know, when you face the some mental break. How do you get over it, or do you just gonna make it part of your life? When I face uh, when, some when difficulties when you have and mental, mental difficulties, some uh, problems, uh, how do you sort of uh, get over that uh, difficulty that you are facing? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, I'm still facing this kind of, you know, every day. Like, uh, um, um, yeah, first of all, I, you know, all my, whatever the pain, I just try to write l lyrics. Also try to convert it to the melody. Um, yeah, that, that's probably my way of sharing my pain with uh, people. So, yeah, if you just, you know, how do you say, don't talk to people or don't do anything, it's kind of too much, you know. So, yeah, um, I don't think I overcame the pain of losing my father or losing my friends. I'm still dealing with this. Put it this way, I'm, I'm still bleeding, right? If it's a physical pain, the, the bleeding sometimes become, became like, how do you say, well, eventually became a scab or something that was the stop. But the, uh, mentally, if you're bleeding, you never stop, actually. Um, so the way of me of trying to overcome, overcome for that kind of problem is put everything into art to, you know, yeah. Then eventually, I'm hoping that art or melody I create can help people, something like this. So that's how I try to overcome my thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Please. Hello, my name is May. Um, thank you for coming uh, Can you here. take off your mask? I can't hear you. <laughs> um, my name is May. Thank you for coming here and speaking. And my question is, how do you deal with nerves? Hmm? I'm sorry, um, I couldn't get it. How do you deal with nerves, like when you get nervous? Do you ever get nervous? <laughs> the, um, the answer is obvious, no. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, yes. Um, so let's see if I go on a stage, right? The plane, I mean, it can be in front of 100,000 people or 500 people. Um, so uh, when I played for, uh, when I played at Carnegie Hall, um, a few years ago, I played with uh, with orchestra. Um, I was very nervous. 
like, wow, you know, I'm playing Kan at Carnegie Hall, pianist, also composer. Um, but so I practice a lot, <laughs> like, like as much as I can. So then I didn't become nervous at all. <laughs> it was funny though, when I was playing the Carnegie Hall, actually, I said it on my MC talk, I, when I, I, I said, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> actually, I used to have a condominium next to Carnegie Hall. Or by walk. <laughs> I was supposed to say practice, practice, practice. <laughs> anyway, so yes, um, if you don't, if I don't practice enough for any show, or so that show becomes just fear, right? Mm -hmm. But if you practice your, enough, so then everything becomes so how do you say entertaining and then exciting. So I think um, it's. You know, depends on the, your definition of you practice a lot. Uh, it doesn't have to be like long hours or like or how much you can concentrate. But I think to prepare for something like this. So that the, my answer is I don't become nervous because I practice a lot. Because, uh, for example, just like we've seen. On the tenth anniversary, you composed a song and played piano in front of emperor and empress, and that was nationally televised. So that's a big thing too. And uh, you weren't uh, uh, nervous for that. Actually, show. yes, I was so nervous. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, I was kind of shaking. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was semi-confident in terms of my composition. But uh, yeah, uh, performing part, yes. Now, uh, uh, I'm taken from this side, not much, but uh, it's okay. So I pass, uh, yes, please. Hi, Yoshiki, I'm Yuya. Thank you for visiting Stanford today. Can you put your microphone closer? Oh, yeah. Uh, so the, my question is like, may, when you make decisions, uh, what does your thinking, thinking process look like? Like, what are the most important things for you to make decisions? Thank you. Um, good question. When I make a decision, I kind of like narrow down the, you know, the answers. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Again, I keep saying the same thing. If I do this, this uh, is this gonna be good for the world? <laughs> that's like uh, eventually, whatever that you know, sm small thing. But if, so that's uh, you know, I, when I make a decision, um, yeah, like I almost have no choice to do this. Like, um, yeah, I'm selective, I, I, though. You know, I. I don't do everything I'm asked to do, <laughs> but yes, when I make a decision, that's like, hmm, I have no choice not, not doing uh, doing this. So I just... You have been producing wine and champagne. Is there a possibility that you would go for sake one day? <laughs> <laughs> or whiskey or... <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, well, I mean, also, you know, I love music, that's became my occupation. So I love drinking wine. <laughs> so that's kind of became, you know, um, my business too. Um, I just have to like sake or whiskey first before I decide to do, get into this business. You, you don't I, I do, I do love sake and whiskey, but just, <laughs> but. Um, okay, okay, we, we, let's <laughs> stop it. Yeah. Okay, uh, the uh, gentleman in the red sweater. Hello, uh, I'm Masaki. I'm a graduate school of education. Uh, my question is, I think you already accomplished so much. You have money, fame, and status. And uh, my question is, uh, what do you want to pray if you wish you could? And are you still hungry or are you satisfied already? Uh, uh, is he still hungry, or is he full, and uh, thinks well, that what do you he, want he has attained, or d d does he want to go for somewhere else? Yeah. Uh, 
Um, yes, I'm very hungry. <laughs> Not literally, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't eat breakfast today. <laughs> but, but in terms of life, yes, I don't think I accomplished the, you know, um, yet. Yes, I'm nowhere near household name in the States or our world. So, yeah, I'd like to pass on my dream. Like, um, yes, I'm uh, still practicing piano every day, composing, um, and working hard. Yes, very hungry. Now, I have gotten questions from students now. I would not like to limit that now. Young at heart, who used to be young or whatever, uh, please uh, do, don't uh, hesitate to raise. You are young, so I won't <laughs> uh, give you the chance. I would like to give chances to some people. Uh, would you like to? Aren't you a student? I am not. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is a, I was a diplomat once, so uh, I, I can say compliments. I'm sorry, please, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm Miho from the Japan Society. It's a non-profit organization and providing a program um, the, um, educating, you know, the building the relationship between Japan and the U.S. And my biggest challenge is uh, fundraising. Um, the, especially like a Japanese people don't tend to have a charity mindset. Mm. So what made you motivated to do the lots of, you know, charity activities um, on your life? Um, interesting. Yes, uh, every time I donate, I get somehow, because, because also I, I state that I donated to, you know, uh, let's see, recently I support, I'm supporting the people who, who had to move, who lost their home in, in, because of the war in Ukraine, Russia. So, um, so I've been supporting that cause as well. But every time I, I say, state that in Japan, like, why don't you do it quietly, <laughs> right? People say that. Why do you have to say it? Well, two reasons. One, because of I donated to that cause or Red Cross or people want to know that something is happening. Of course, obviously, people know what's happening. But sometimes when I donate for climate change issue or blah, 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 so people want to find out this is, this is what people, you know, is happening in this world, they, they need help. Um, also, I would like to motivate uh, all those artists or celebrities to have more, you know, the donating kind of like a charity mind. Yes, uh, uh, when I came to the U.S., I was shocked in a great way. A lot of uh, celebrities involved with this, uh, a lot, uh, se several charity calls. I was like, wow, that's great. I would like to bring that culture into Jap to Japan. I mean, Japan, there's a thing called wabi-sabi, something you can do it quietly, which is beautiful culture. I respect that. But, but in terms of charity, I think people can, you know, be out loud and then spread that the the mentality because I would like to do so for among doesn't have to be celebrities or to everyone right yeah yes <laughs> uh, anyone else please uh, uh, not student <laughs> uh, someone a uh, uh, little elder. <laughs> uh, the gentleman with the uh, glasses over there. Hi, Yoshiki-san. Thank you so much for coming to Stanford. <laughs> My name is Eijiro. I'm kind of old, but you know, um, <laughs> already graduated from yeah, Stanford Business School back in 2006. And then, uh, yeah, actually, I'm already trying to be a rock star. And then I'm now, you know, not in the music, but you know, I'm now running a matcha company, matcha Japanese green tea. Okay. And then, as you already, you know, promote the champagne or other beverage business, 
do you have, do you have any advice <laughs> for the how to promote matcha? I mean, you know, matcha, matcha is obviously really healthy. So, you know, you, you have any advice or, you know, <clears throat> promote a more Japanese, you know, authentic you know, culture to the state? So you love matcha business. Uh, you, you, you run, yeah? That's, that's great. Um, yes, uh, if I were doing this, uh, if to be doing the running your business, I would say um, I would stud, study, of course, you've probably done as much as you can the benefit of drinking matcha, right? Like um, make you feel uh, just like anti, how do you say, uh, uh, age, age, like, what, what, right? It's like uh, make you feel look young, right? So I would probably provide your matcha to some celebrities, influence, influencers around the world. Okay, you're gonna give it to me? Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, I will promote that, okay. So yes, then, you know, first also tastes good and then uh, you're trying to expand your business to the world, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, then you're, you're running this in, in the States? Okay. Yes, uh, there's a, um, in, I mean, also the way you, you drink matcha sometimes, right? There's a, some ceremony things you can use that to, yeah, there's a billion ways of doing that, kind of expanding this business to it. Um, um, but first of all, do you love matcha? Okay, that's most important, right? So, as, so just tell people how much you love matcha. That's that. That's that's very authentic. So that's I think that you know the, your passion for loving matcha as much as you can spread that your, your passion. That's the most important thing I would say. Thank you. I'm afraid that. Uh... Now, Yoshiki will be flooded with matcha, <laughs> sake, shoyu, whatever. <laughs> please uh, recommend, please taste. Now, uh, two, uh, what, what does it say? Two minutes? Okay. Uh, uh, those people who, why don't you, this lady here, yeah. You're a student? Okay, not yet? Maybe. Um, hello, my name is Erin Tsutsui. I'm 13 years old. I'm daughter of Kyoto Tsutsui. <laughs> and um, my question is, what is your advice on, especially to young people, on how to find their passion or their purpose in life? Yeah. Thank how to you. find the passion, passion. in project? Okay, um, you know, again, I'm also trying to find the answer every day, you know, um, um, but so, so there must be a reason we came to this world, right, basically, like uh, we are born, right? I mean, um, so, so I try to be very grateful um, I'm here in this world. Um, so if you think that way, um, then you have pretty much anything you, 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 can, uh, you can do, right? For, for it's your choice to pursue your dream or you want to be something, you want to become rock star or, or you know, anything you would, you would like. So, we are just, we are given this kind of like opportunity to be living in this world. So, um, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, your question is? Uh, uh, how to sort of promote your passion, passion. in this, any project. Uh, yeah. How do yeah. you find your passion? So, again, you know, uh, this society has a lot of like, um, you know, how do you say? To give you, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, or why don't you become like that? Or, you know, there are a lot of, you know, uh, opinion and, and, and everything. But just 
what I do, I just like, get rid of everything, then be yourself, by yourself and then try to think. What do I want to become? Like, um, well, first of all, again, I said, I'm breathing this world. So what do I want to do? Then, again, my, my situation, I was like, I want to help people somehow. Somehow. Then what am I good at? Well, I love music. Then I'm I can compose. You know, it doesn't have to be a musician or composer. You can be um, athlete or anything, you know, or, or doctor or teacher or whatever. As long as you're trying to make, <laughs> it's kind of a cliche, but, you know, make, try to make the world a better place. So you find your passion. Yeah. So. I think uh, you encouraged a lot of us here. Uh, let's be a rock star. <laughs> and uh, I, I, we would like to thank uh, Yoshiki for giving uh, all his uh, thinking to us. So uh, I think this is the end of our session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yoshiki-san and Ambassador Fujisaki. Uh, Yoshiki-san, you also helped me with uh, parenting my daughter, so that's really <laughs> fantastic. Um, and um, really, this was such a meaningful, insightful session, and uh, thank you for sh really sharing deeply personal stories as well. Um, uh, be your own rock star, that's really a motto to live by for all of us. Uh, it's one thing to be your own rock star, it's uh, quite another to be a rock star for other people, uh, much less tens of millions of people for decades. So it's been wonderful to have you here. It's an honor for us to host you here. And uh, thank you for being Yoshiki. Please continue to uh, stay being Yoshiki. Uh, and uh, with our gratitude, we'd like to present you with this uh, frame, Stanford uh, um, diploma looking kind of frame. To uh, invite your super fan, uh, she's been your fan since she's uh, four years old. To give you some uh, Stanford swag items to present. Four years old. She, since she was four years old, when she went to rock. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you came to my concert when I was four years old. Yeah. <laughs> your mother or your father brought you, my right? Father. Wow, wow, you have rock and roll father. Okay. Thank you. Oh. What's, what's inside? Hmm? Huh. Okay. Stanford hat. Perfect. Stanford wine glass. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And this whole conference wouldn't have been possible for, uh, except for our wonderful staff and uh, our Japan program uh, program officer, Kana uh, Lin Panko, would like to present Ambassador Fujisaki uh, saying swag. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, this concludes our conference, the 40th anniversary, uh, APOC uh, 40th anniversary conference. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and please give another round of warm, warm welcome. I mean, thank you to Yoshiki-san and Ambassador. <laughs>